assembling your GPX series goal detector. Start assembly by inserting the teardrop shaped rubber washers into the lower shaft. Ensuring that the locating pin is facing down. Attach the coil to the lower shaft using the plastic nut and bolt. Make sure that the nut and bolt are tightened firmly, but not so firmly that the coil cannot be readily adjusted to suit the terrain. Loosen the twist lock on the upper shaft and insert the lower shaft into the upper shaft. Ensure that the spring-loaded pin aligns with the holes in the upper shaft. Slide the bungee cord clamp onto the upper shaft and then slide the handle onto the upper shaft. Note that the handle angles towards the coil, not away from it. Attach the armrest to the upper shaft using the supplied plastic nuts and bolts. Leave the nuts slightly loose. Clip the armrest straps onto the buttons on either side of the armrest and slide the straps through the soft armrest cover until the armrest cover is firmly positioned. With the screen facing away from the coil, slide the top of the control box into the base of the armrest and fasten the two nuts and bolts. Adjust the position of the handle for comfort. The optimum handle position is when your elbow is just coming out of the armrest. Tighten handle screws with a screwdriver. Ensuring the handle is correctly aligned with the coil and armrest. Wind the cable that comes from the handle around the shaft. And push the plug into the small socket on the control box. Avoid winding the cable too tightly and putting strain on the connector, or too loosely that it could become entangled in a tree. Wind the coil cable around the lower and upper shafts enough times to take up the slack. Plug the coil connector into the coil socket on the control box, firmly tightening the retaining ring to hold it in place. Use the Velcro straps to secure the cable to the shaft. Leave enough slack at the bottom of the cable near the coil to allow the angle of the coil to be adjusted while detecting. The coil cable must not be left loose, as this is likely to result in the cable becoming damaged. Place the charged battery into the harness pouch. Plug the power cable into the battery. Connect the other end of the power cable into the control box. The harness is worn with the pouch for the battery at the back. Adjust the length of the back strap so that the battery sits just above waist level. The shoulder pads should not be rubbing on your neck. Adjust the belt and shoulder straps for comfort. Create a loop in the bungee cord. To attach the bungee cord, remove the bolt from the shaft clamp. Place the loop in the bungee cord into the clamp and secure it, thereby refitting and tightening the bolt. Clip the bungee cord onto one of the harness shoulder strap rings and adjust the length of the bungee, the position of the clamp and the length of the shaft for comfort. You should be able to stand up straight with the coil just above the ground and the weight of the detector resting on the bungee. Connect the headphones. Your GPX gold detector is now assembled. Quick Start Guide
Attach the Quick Start Decal. To attach the Quick Start Decal, first ensure that the control box end cap is clean. Peel back the adhesive cover and place over the switches in the end cap. Set the controls. Set the knob and switch positions to the green markings. Start from the top control. Turn the top control knob, called threshold, halfway to the green marker. This should produce a faint audio hum, like a mosquito. Set the switch, called search mode, to the middle position, general, as indicated by the green marker. Set the switch, called soil timings, to the middle position, normal, as indicated by the green marker. Set the switch called double D to the right position, as indicated by the green marker. Set the switch called ground balance to the left position, tracking, as indicated by the green marker. Switch the metal detector on. Switch the metal detector on by pressing and releasing the on-off switch. A short tune will be played from the headphones. Perform an auto-tune. Stand still holding the metal detector with the coil off the ground at waist height. Press and release the small black button on the control box called auto-tune. Continue to stand still with the metal detector coil in the air. After approximately 60 seconds, Three beeps will be heard from the headphones. The auto-tune procedure is now complete. Set the ground balance. Move the coil up and down and listen to the changing audio. While moving the coil up and down, Press and release the green button on the handle once. Continue moving the coil up and down until the audio becomes stable. Your GPX detector is now ready to use. For best results, this quick start procedure should be completed each time you switch on your detector. What to listen for. For best performance, the GPX detectors should have a constant faint audio hum, like a mosquito. Here is what it sounds like. When the coil is moved over a piece of gold, there is a change in the audio. A large piece of gold that is close to the surface will cause a very noticeable change. A small piece of gold or a large deep piece of gold will cause a less noticeable change. The audio will only change while the coil is moving. If the coil stops moving and is stationary over the gold, then there will be no change in the audio. When searching for gold, it is important to listen very carefully to the audio sound to ensure that you don't miss any small or deeply buried gold. Unstable audio. Your GPX series gold detector is a very sensitive piece of electronic equipment and can be affected by many different noise sources. If the detector is noisy, the first thing to do is stop sweeping the coil and check if the noise is still present. If the noise is still present, then the detector is being affected by electrical noise from sources such as power lines and radio towers, as well as other metal detectors operating close by. 
This is how unstable audio caused by electrical noise sounds. This is a problem because the unstable audio can make gold very difficult to hear. To remove the noise and make the audio stable, an auto-tune should be performed by holding the metal detector still with the coil off the ground at about waist height. Press and release the small black button on the control box called auto-tune. Continue to stand still with the metal detector coil held at waist height. After approximately 60 seconds, three beeps will be heard from the headphones. Now with the coil held still, the audio should be stable. Now you will have stable audio and will easily hear gold signals. Even very faint signals from small and deep gold. Set soil timings. Ground noise, which is caused by minerals in the ground, can only occur when sweeping the coil. Ground noise is usually eliminated by the ground balance procedure, but sometimes requires a change of the soil timing setting as well. To set your detector to the correct soil timing, follow this procedure. Set the soil timing switch to normal. This is the middle switch position. Set the ground balance as described previously by moving the coil up and down, pressing and releasing the button once and continuing to move the coil up and down until the audio becomes stable. Sweep the coil over the ground and listen to the audio. If the audio remains stable, then normal is the correct soil timing for you to use. If the audio is unstable, then change the soil timing switch to enhance and set the ground balance again by moving the coil up and down, pressing and releasing the button once and continuing to move the coil up and down until the audio becomes stable. Again, sweep the coil over the ground and listen to the audio. It should now remain stable. Select a coil for your GPX gold detector. The standard 11-inch double-D coil supplied with your GPX gold detector is recommended for most ground conditions. The 11-inch mono-loop coil supplied with a GPX 5000 is more sensitive but can be more affected by ground mineralization and electrical interference. There is also a wide range of Mine Lab Commander coils available for the GPX Gold detectors, and each one has its advantages. Large coils are best for covering large areas of cleared ground and provide deep detection of large gold. Small coils are best for maneuvering in tight spaces, such as between rocks and trees. Small coils are also best for finding small pieces of gold. There are also two coil configurations called double D and mono loop. In most conditions, mono loop coils detect deeper than double D coils, but can also be noisier in highly mineralized ground. If the ground is heavily mineralized, then a double D coil will be more stable and may actually detect deeper. Ensure that you select the right coil for the best performance. Troubleshooting. 
will not turn on. If the detector will not switch on, check that the power cable that connects the battery and control box is fastened securely. If this does not fix the problem, try recharging the battery, or if possible, try another battery. No sound. If there is no sound from the headphones, check that the headphones are securely plugged into the battery. Check that the detector is switched on. If the detector switches on, but there is still no sound, turn the threshold control to the middle position. Try a different set of headphones. If there is still no sound, restore factory presets. Poor detection depth. Remove the coil skid plate and remove any loose dirt. Check that the coil cable is securely plugged into the control box. Ensure that the nut and bolt that attach the coil are plastic and have not been replaced with a metal nut or bolt. Using metal nuts or bolts will significantly reduce performance. Check settings. Ensure that the switch settings match the quick start guide. Loose coil. If it becomes difficult to tighten your coil and the coil falls forward, replace the rubber teardrop shaped washers. Restore factory presets. Switch the metal detector off by pressing and releasing the on-off switch. Then press and hold the on-off switch for 5 seconds. Rotate the function select knob clockwise 2 clicks to highlight all settings. Rotate the settings knob one click to complete the process. The metal detector has now returned to original factory settings. For more information, refer to your instruction manual or go to www.minelab.com.